to the stage to share her story. The rest of the time of such an inspiring team. It has been a pleasure meeting the faces who have helped create a beautiful big cup box for Some of whom have their own survival stories. Cancer affects not only the individual, but also friends and family as well. Some who may not know what to do or what to say. That's why the Big Hug Box is such a wonderful initiative. An initiative I know first hand that can change a mood or feeling on any given day. But I will come back to this. Um, when I was told I was getting the first rock box early last year, I really didn't understand what it meant. Lisa introduced me to the Big Hug Box and I'm so grateful that I was. Lisa presented me with a rock box and honestly, I didn't want to open it because it was so beautifully presented. Little did Lisa know that I had bad results that week. I was told my cancer had progressed and that the current treatment, it wasn't working. Lisa sharing her own cancer journey allowed me to tell her mind. Firstly, in 2015, I was misdiagnosed with a calf tear. I had an enlarged calf muscle and cramps when I walked. I would wake up in the morning and my right foot would um, be asleep. I would have pins and needles. I had swelling in my ankle, which I put down to maybe wearing bad shoes or being on my feet all day at work. Does this sound like cancer? Because it absolutely never crossed my mind. In June 2016, I finally had my diagnosis. I have a cancer called mesenchymal chondrosarcoma. Try saying that one five times fast. Um, mesenchymal chondrosarcoma falls under sarcomas, which are typically soft tissue related, making up only 3% of all cancers. However, chondrosarcoma is a subtype, which usually forms in the bone or cartilage, and I am considered stage 4 because it has metastasized. My first chemotherapy was aggressive and made me so very sick, so I had to stop. It also wasn't working, so I proceeded with a right above knee amputation in October 2016, which I thought would save my life. This wasn't an easy decision for me, believe you me. I have had many treatments over the last two and a half years, from two lung surgeries to five lots of radiation. I've had immunotherapy in late 2017, which has caused pneumonitis in my lungs for the last year, so breathing is quite difficult. I have been on steroids for over a year, and um, if you've been on those, we know how that can affect you as well. Um, however, in saying that, they help me breathe, and this is important because it means I can sing for you tonight. 2018, I tried a different chemo, and then this made me sick again. So I took a break. My body absolutely needed it. For six weeks, in fact, um, I went to Europe with my twin sister Lisa, who is here tonight. And I know she had fun pushing me around in a wheelchair for five of those weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, I don't think she did. <laughs> um, people said Santorini had too many stairs for me. So I went anyway because I wanted to see the beautiful sunset um, over in Ia. I had many moments of tears, but I pushed myself because I knew if I didn't, I would regret it. I didn't want cancer to define me or what I was capable of, especially my amputation, and this was a once in a lifetime treatment. I came home to surgery having a skin graft on my left thigh and a metastasis removed from the top of my head. I have also started another chemo to see if it can stabilize my disease. Jury still out on that one. So, <laughs> 2018 was my most trying year, and the pneumonitis and I hadn't spent over two months, probably overall, over the whole year. In the hospital certainly took a toll on me. This year is different. This year is about jumping in the deep end because I consider goals being quite important because I think that they bring a message of hope and they give you something to aspire to. To name a few things, I'm starting a makeup course this week, something I've always wanted to do. I am in talks to be a radio presenter at a local private radio station. I had my second gig lined up with Jamie, who you will meet tonight, um, he's playing guitar for me at the Beaumont Street Fair in March. I am in the ensemble for Beauty and the Beast at the Civic Theatre this year. I have also started a new Instagram page, 
with a fellow Amity Canada, whom I've never met, um, but we connected instantly through our social media. Um, we've called our Instagram page Am Beauty Collective because we want to redefine beauty and inspire Am Beauty women everywhere by showing what makes them feel beautiful. As well as concentrating on my own Instagram page and blog, um, I guess my Instagram is like my diary. <laughs> um, when Lisa asked me to be an ambassador, she told me she felt my social media posts were inspiring and positive. I never considered that my honesty to portray these kind of messages. However, I do believe being positive is imperative to one's well-being. In the face of cancer, this is so important. And the Big Heart Box is uplifting and reminds us that someone is always thinking of you. The beautiful rock box I received was so unexpected, so personal, so thoughtful, and you can feel the love poured in each and every one of these. It was certainly the big hug I needed that week. I believe that some moments like these come into our lives when we need it the most, as it did mine. I am excited for the future of the big hug box. And Lisa, I am so proud of you. I've lost your face. Here we go. <laughs> Um, and all that you have achieved, you are an absolute inspiration because you've worked so hard at this. And I hope also to be proud as your first ambassador. And may I lead in your footsteps and bring many, many happy moments as you do for others. Thank you all so much for listening and for coming tonight. And I look forward to seeing you. <laughs>